All right. What you're seeing right now is a QuickTime movie of my desktop, which I've recorded. One of the first things you're going to notice is that there is no save button. While this bothers a lot of people because every time you hit Apple S, it beeps at you because it's a command that doesn't exist anymore. What I quickly have learned is this is a program that's running on a more professional level where in really pro applications, we don't have save. Now, one of the most popular things people complain about is you don't have multiple timelines and you can't save projects. This is a fallacy. This is a completely new project browsing library. Look at this. These are about a dozen, half a dozen, maybe a dozen projects that I have. You can modify and view any project file, any set of media in there, and it's going to actually let you play and scrub the project without opening it. I'm not in the project right now. I'm just looking at the project gallery, which I can play back with sound and picture without even being in a timeline. You guys understanding kind of what's happening here? Yeah, you can amazing. scrub between them. You can hear the sound. You can audit all these projects. This is the beginning architecture for one of the most advanced sharing options that's ever existed. Imagine the ability that Final Cut can share with itself multiple projects without opening it. This is the architecture required so that you can share amongst multiple seats of the application without actually being in project files. Right. You understand? Mm -hmm. So are they embedded right now in the Final Cut movie itself? No, this isn't a movie. This is the timeline. You're looking at eight, nine, ten timelines with metadata. This little icon here talks about metadata. So without opening the project, I can go in and start reading metadata about the project. If I've made exports, I can actually hit uh, properties here and I can see when I've created that and I can create where it's been saved oh, wow, and so where cool. those types of things are saved. I can even go in and look at where I've exported. So when I've made exports, imagine editors making rough cuts, they can get to those. I'm not even in the project yet. This is all happening on the surface. This is a major, major overhaul of a complete architecture that Final Cut 7 could never uh, upgrade to. Right. Okay? Now, this is an actual timeline. I double click and I open an actual timeline. You can see that if I go from one project, I want to go to another project. I just double click this one. I'll go, I don't know, I'm just looking around here. I can click on this project. It'll load that project. There's all the edits. The whole project's there. And I was able to get and view these different things before I was even in the project. So again, this is a massive overhaul. And look, I can use these two arrows just to switch between project files now because they're in my buffer. So I believe that in the future, when you have multiple editors using this, you can just share projects, check them in, check them in and out, and you don't. You can actually see everybody else's work without having have to go through that. Now another thing here is if I go to like a, a compound clip here, I can click on this. I can double click it. Um, I can go to my sort of inspector here. You'll see they call it the inspector, which is similar how Keynote and, right, and yeah, iMovie. It's the Apple, yeah. This is a great way to work. I mean, people would say this is very iMovie. Well, Keynote to me is the most professional yeah. application that Apple builds, actually. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I use it for everything. Look at how this works. I am auditing different effects, not by applying, but by not even by clicking, by dragging my mouse over over different filter options, which I can customize myself. By dragging my mouse, you see how it's instantly updating the timeline with an effect by dragging my mouse over that effect, which is a concept that's faster and more precise without having to preview anything. If I want to search for something, I can type in like saturation here. I can find an actual clip that is named saturation, apply that, and I'm instantly going to have that applied. But I can preview everything. This is a gesture recognition beginning. A world, a word and a concept that very few people know about. I can now click on my effects and I'm going to have uh, that saturation applied. Um, I can obviously adjust it like I normally would. But the fact that I could audition which mm -hmm. is a term that I think uh, a lot of people don't use. I can audition things without applying them before I apply them. Then I can go back to my timeline. It's all there. And it's going to start auto-rendering. I have my auto-render set to five seconds. So after five seconds, it'll just start rendering it. But without it, I can hit play, as you saw there. And I want everyone to know this is a laptop. This is a 15-inch laptop. This is 2K media that I've been using... Oh, yeah, uh, and you can see it rendering there in the background. It's, it's rendering like, in the background. Yeah. See, it started, and now it stops. Now, look at this. Watch this on a laptop. I'm going to hit play with my scopes, and my scopes are extremely high res. Now, in the software that I've recorded with my computer, it doesn't record 
as many frames as it would. This this starts to stutter right. a little bit. You have to trust that on, on my actual computer, this plays at 24 frames per second. I've got a real-time updating histogram. I can even go down to a waveform where I have parade, which is one of my favorite ways to look at things. I'll, I'll end up uh, going to the parade in a histogram. I can go to a parade in a waveform here. I mean, I can go to totally different concepts. Look, at, and I'm still playing. Notice that I haven't hit stop on the timeline. The timeline is chewing through it. This is an architecture of such horsepower. People that are complaining about XML are forgetting that the horsepower in this is the equivalent of a room's worth of horsepower 15 years ago, maybe less. This is a massive, this is a dual core 15 inch laptop. Steve and Sonny can attest to that. <laughs> yeah, and it's this right is there. playing back without with scope, with high resolution scopes. Now watch this, I'm gonna go to another project file here, completely different timeline. This is one of my favorite things that I have. This is a completely different architecture. Notice when you're doing sound, and there's all these cool ways to do graphical designs of these things. They're very fast to get to. You don't have tricky like audio, you know, like visual things going on, but check this out. I can make keyframes here. When you normally use to use keyframe adjustments, it would adjust the rubber band, right? Mm -hmm. The rubber band's what moved. Watch yeah. what happens here. This is gonna show compression mm. and decompression of the audio waveform. Of the waveform itself. Notice oh, that it's cool. compressing the waveform. It's not lowering it yeah. or raising it, it's compressing it. Here you'll see with the spikes here. See how they're compressing and decompressing? based on the volume. That's much more like an audio editing app, exactly. because like Logic or something. Or and this is way more precise for people to see. They can actually see in a visual representation their audio. Before you just saw a waveform, but waveforms don't tell you anything. With green, red, and yellow different peaks, we can see where audio actually does become dangerous. And when you're adding a compressor limiter, which every software has, but it's almost impossible to see your results, we can finally add a compressor limiter and see the results happening because we have the red adjustment the red level. This is a total overhaul with dynamic adjustments that didn't exist before. Notice the animation of these things to get rid of them. This is a very, very, very deep program for speed and graphic design. Again, this is a laptop. Right. Now, this is my favorite thing. This is so powerful and this will show you horsepower. If you're editing and you're a fast editor, you will constantly be reviewing and playing and you will notice that you'll change your mind on something. Watch what happens when I change my mind on this clip. I'm gonna drag it up, I'm gonna move it over, still playing, I'm gonna let go, still playing. The hmm. fact that I yeah. can manipulate clips, I move that <laughs> clip on top of the playhead, it changed the clip position. And it will adjust my clip dynamically whilst still playing back. This is something editors have never had the luxury in terms of speed to be able to do before. Right. I learned this myself because normally as soon as you click, a click denotes pause. That's right. a normal keystroke. Right. With this system, I've been playing and I was playing one day and all of a sudden I hit click and it kept going because I just wanted to adjust something a tiny amount. Notice dynamically the project playing, the waveform and the project player adjusting by my expansion of that clip. Did you notice that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's amazing. This is massive horsepower here. Now if I go back here, um, and grab a clip and I move it way in front. I'm gonna move it way in front in a second here and lift it up. It's gonna change it, go back, and I'm gonna show you something very, very cool here. Because while you're playing back, I started dragging it over and copy paste. I just hit paste, 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 and it just pasted it over and over all the way up the timeline. You didn't even notice it was happening. Mm -hmm. right. These are concepts and I've got my waveform playing the whole time and I'm covering up all these clips. This is a concept that is going to un uncover a whole new world of potential because we have a horsepower level that's so much higher than we've had before we could never ever you know come to these you know types of of conclusions